We have right here, this is the Wavelink. It's an 80 gigabit per second M2 NVMe SSD enclosure with cooling fan and Thunderbolt 5, 4, 3, USB 4 support. And you can put in NVMe's 2280 SD. It works with the Mac Mini M4, and it's also supposed to work with PC. So, and it's also got what's called Rapid Fire TS. So we're gonna take a look at that. And we're gonna do that now. First of all, I do have to mention that Wavelink did send me product for, for unbox review, but they have no say in how I unbox it in my opinion. All opinions are of Geekazine, and I do have a section that talks about how all my review policies. And of course, if you got a product, you just let me know and we'll get it in the shop and take a look at it. So, so. All right, here it is right here. The Wavelink selected a magnetic top lid, cooling fan inside. It can take 6,000 megabits per second, 5,000 megabits per second NVMe drives. It does not come with an NVMe drive. This is just the enclosure. So keep that in mind as we are unboxing it. And I might have a couple NVMEs that I can quickly put in, but we're not really going to test it in this place. We're, we're just going to unbox it and show you everything that you get with this enclosure. It can do up to 80 gigabits per second, but NVMEs go up to like six to seven, 7,500 megabits per second right now. So this is pretty much might be even future proof from here. Well, it says it's got a M.2 slot, a USB 4 V2 rated, which is 80 gigabits per second, but it works off of the, I believe it works off the PCIe protocol. And I think it is a PCIe 4. Yeah, PCIe 4. So when we've got something like that, you're, you're talking about, 35 to four, maybe, maybe you get to six gigabits per second, but it really depends on the drive itself and the combination from there. So let's go ahead and get this guy unboxed and show you what we got here. They're down there. There's one, there's two. There we go. Basically, we have the enclosure. There it is right there. Pop this out. Pop this out. And inside here, you can move that out of the way. We've got instruction manuals. There's a little screwdriver right there. We've got the USB C to C. This will probably be, is this a Thunderbolt? It does say uh, have a Thunderbolt symbol and a five on it. So this is a Thunderbolt five cable, which is interesting. And then this right here is an basically a thermal paste strip. So what you'll do is you'll, when you put it into the NVMe into the case, this thing will be on top to help bring the heat into the case so it separates out a little bit just like a processor thermal paste in there so you don't want to throw that away and of course you'll probably they only give you one so if you switch out nvmes you got to be very careful when you put this in because fingerprints can cause issues from there. There's a little plastic on here, so that's touching. It's not a big deal. But when you put it in, you'll want to try to be as fingerprint free as possible when you do that. So, all right, let's move this out of the way. Let's see what we've got inside here. So Wavelink, it says USB 4 V2 80 gigs. On the side here, we have the USB-C connection. It looks like we have a couple vents here. This is all going to be thermal heat sink. So you, this will get warm. This will get warm, but I don't expect it to get above like 100, 110 Fahrenheit, which you can still hold on to it. So, but the vents there and there is a fan inside. So that will push out some of the hot air. Nothing on this side on the back. Looks like we have another vent. And then this is the notch to open up the case. That's the vent right here. And then on this side, we have nothing on the bottom. Of course, we have nothing here. It is magnetic from here. So we can pop that open. There is the spot where we would put our NVMe drive. Now, this is where we need the screwdriver. The, the unit has a basically screwdriver, a screw in there. They have to take out. So let's go ahead and do that right now. 
is I do have an NVMe put to put in, but I'm not sure how, what the speed is on that NVMe. So as you can see, it shows it does have a Thunderbolt 5 logo on there. So it is rated for Thunderbolt 5. And then it's a single NVMe drive. So one NVMe stick in there and you're good to go. So with that said, let me grab an NVMe stick and see what we can put in. All right, I have a couple here. I've got the Lexar Pro Professional NM80. So this one will do 7,500 megabits per second. We're gonna put this right into the wavelength here. Don't lose the screw. This is always the fun part. This little screwdriver that comes with it is not magnetic. Keep that in mind. We're gonna take this case. There's the uh, Lexar Pro in there and all those, this ties down, but this is magnetic. You'll see that strip right there, that, that metal. And then there's the two magnets right here. So what we'll do is we put it in like so. And bring it down and it will, you'll hear that clap. I don't know if you heard that or not, but that that's a pretty definite clap. And now that's all plugged in. Now we'll take this cable. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it into my Mac mini and see how it connects. All right, so we have the, the we have the target drive and you can just basically use it from the drive. We can go, let's do, we're gonna do a five gigabit test. So basically it's gonna write, read and then, or it's gonna write then read five gigabits per second. So we're gonna hit the uh, start test. It's gonna write and look at that. That's a pretty decent speed at 40, 40 almost 4,500 and 4,500 read. So, wow, those numbers are great. Very impressive on start, even though this was 7,500. And I think that's also because I have a couple other things plugged into my Mac Mini M4. And we the MVME drive is FAT32. Now, if I set it up as dedicated to Mac or NTFS for Windows, then these read and write speeds would be a little bit different. But this is more than enough. If I was, <clears throat> excuse me, if I was recording 4K, 8K video, then that's perfect from there. Now, I didn't put the thermal tape in there, so I'm not gonna let this run too much, but I'm just gonna get my heat gun really quick and get a general idea of how much it, how hot it is. Right now it's registered at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And <clears throat> I'm guessing that that's gonna get up a little bit more. So pretty decent test. And the other thing you're noticing, actually now it's saying 46. So it's getting better as we go. The thing about some NVMEs, external drives, is they start to slow down a little bit. And so you might start at 4,500, but then end up at 3,500. And that there's a lot of factors involved on it. The MVME is a factor, the case is a factor, the cable is a factor as well. How you have the cable plugged in. I have it plugged, right now I have it plugged directly into the Mac Mini M4, but I could put it through a docking station. And through the docking station, I might see a little bit of degradation on that. So I might not see 45, hundred megabits per second. I might see 4,000 megabits per second. I'll run my heat gun again. And right now it's sitting at 86. You can see that right there. If we pop this open and read it from inside, right from the NVMe, that's at 112 right there. So you get the idea that it, it's, it's hotter here. That's why you want to have the thermal pad which goes right there and here I'll just kind of do it like this so it'd go like here and then basically what i would do is i take the first film on and then i put it down here and then once i had the nvme that i choose that i chose then i would then pull off this top one and then stick this on now keep in mind that case is magnetic. The top of the case is magnetic, but the MVME is, is screwed down. I like that. That way it doesn't it doesn't pop out or anything like that. Although if this does fall on the ground, the chances of this this piece coming off are pretty good. So, but anyway, that is the wavelength. I, I really like that. I'll, I'll definitely put the thermal pad on there and use that for more projects.